Hey, what's up? This is Sarah Steckler of mindfulproductivityblog.com and the Mindful Productivity Podcast. Today, I wanted to show you how I use different features inside of Gmail to both automate my email and just make my whole my life a whole lot easier. I also wanted to show you an alternative option to Gmail that's a free built-in feature that has a little bit more extensive options for you to use if you want to check that out as well. I also want to preface this with the fact that this is not a sponsored video. The co-founder of Write Inbox reached out to me and said, hey, we'd love for you to check out our platform. I checked it out and I was really impressed. So I went ahead and decided that I wanted to make a video about my Gmail inbox process anyway. So I'm going to be including them in that video today. So a couple things that I want to touch on first. First of all, there are some native Gmail features that you might not know about in Gmail. So we're going to be walking through those today. And the first one is how you can schedule an email to send at a later date. Now, this is a relatively quote unquote new feature. I think it's been kind of rolled out within the past couple of years. But years ago, there was not a way to send an email at a later date which was kind of disappointing. So I used to use Boomerang. Now that Gmail has this as an add-in feature, um, it's really, really easy so I don't have to use a third part party software. So if I wanted to create an email to send to the future, when you open and compose an email, all you do is have to click down here on this blue button and you can either click send now or if you click on the drop down arrow, you can click on schedule send and you'll see that there's a, a variety of different options and presets they have for you. So you can send it tomorrow, this afternoon, Monday, whatever. You can also pick a date and time and send it then. Really, really like this feature. I want to point out the difference between why you might want to use Write Inbox um, as an extension onto Gmail. This is a free add-on that you can add right to your Gmail inbox. And I think there is a limit for how much you can use every month with it for the free version, but the tiered versions um, are really fairly priced. So there might be some features on here that you want to use in addition to that. So with the right inbox thing, and this is the green buttons up here at the top and at the bottom, you'll see the green stuff. This is all from right inbox. So when I click on the down arrow here, or when I click on the send later button, you'll see that you still have the same kind of features as, as Gmail. You can send at a later date tomorrow, but here's where it gets really, really cool. You can click at a specific time and then this is where like I was really, really impressed with this. So not only can you do a specific date and a specific time, but you can also type in what time zone you wanted to send it in. So super cool. So if you're working with clients overseas or, you know, like me, a lot of my clients are on East Coast time and I'm in Pacific, I could send them an email at a very specific time. So, you know, if I have a client that's going to an interview or something and I want to wish them good luck and I want to make sure I don't forget it, then I could go in here and have that schedule even just like 15 minutes before they go into their interview or they head off like I could do that ahead of time so cool here's the other thing they have a view examples button up here these are the other things you can type in so you can say in two days at 8 a.m Sunday 10 p.m New York 90 minutes later so you could copy and paste any of these examples in here and send your email at a very very specific time so I just love that I think that's so cool um, that it gives you the the ability to send something at a very specific time and with a specific time zone so that's definitely a bonus as well the other thing I want to talk to you about are canned responses and I want to show you the difference between Gmail and write inbox as well so one thing I love that Gmail's had for a while are canned responses. And what you do is you come down here and you click on, sorry, I don't have like a bigger thing around my mouse, guys, but there's a three dot button down here at the bottom right hand corner of your email. And this is where you'll find canned responses. And this is so cool because you can create responses um, and canned emails that are just ready to go. And you can click on them and it'll populate your email. So let me go ahead and show you an example. I'm going to move the cursor down here. So one thing I was getting when I did a launch while back was I was getting um, students asking me, hey, can I have this course for free? <laughs> and um, that's just something you, you you run into as a business owner. And, you know, I never mind people asking, but, you know, I definitely was finding myself responding to that a, quite a few times. So I actually created a canned response. So that was something I typed in and then I can just populate it really easily. I haven't had to use that again, luckily, but that was nice that when those emails came up, I didn't have to invest my emotional energy in trying to you know, address that personally. I just had a canned response. Alternatively, you can also format them. So I actually had created a 
um, response when I was launching my past membership site. This was like back in like 2017. And I had an email that I had formatted in ConvertKit. So I actually copied and pasted that email from ConvertKit and created a canned email in Gmail. And then you'll see here that it carried over like everything, the color, the image, um, the links, and the button. So that was pretty cool. So that's another way that you could use a canned response. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this here. And I'm gonna also show you how you can create a canned response. One thing to keep in mind when you're creating one is if you have an email signature, you'll wanna make sure that you delete this before creating your canned response. Otherwise your canned response will include the signature and then you'll have a double signature in your email. Not a super big deal, but something that bothered me. So let's say that we wanted to turn this list into a canned email response. We'd come down here to the three buttons, we'd hover over canned responses, and we'd click save draft as template or hover over it. And then we'd see that it says save, oops, as new template. So you click that and then you could name this whatever you want, click save, and then it would be available to you right in here. So that's just a super easy way to create a canned response. Now here's how you can do it in right inbox. So up here, you'll see that there's some different options. They have the template option. And if you click on the drop down, then you'll be able to manage templates. And you can essentially do the same thing. Now there are a couple things and I know they're also rolling out some new features. So there's gonna be updates and I'm sure this is something they'll update. But I noticed that you are not able to make a hyperlink text. So I had to copy my link underneath my text, which is fine, but it wasn't ideal. Um, and then you, all, you also are able to insert photos, but you have to have a host source. So if you have your own website or something, then you could put it in there, but it doesn't look like at this time, they allow you to upload an image to their server to put in a template. So that's just something, um, not a super big deal, but something that I hope that they change in the future. Otherwise you have all these same formatting options. So that was super, super easy. And that'd be another way that you could make a template. Okay. Another thing I want to show you is that, and this is very specific to Gmail, is confidential mode. So this is something I just found recently. And if you come down here to the bottom where you would send your email, there's this little guy that's like a lock and a little like clock. If you click on this, well, if you hover over it, it says turn confidential mode on or off. And if you click on it, this is pretty cool. So it says recipients won't have the option to forward, copy, print, or download this email. This message may be visible to your employer or school, learn more, but basically you can set an expiration. So this is kind of, I don't want to say that it's technically an encrypted message because I don't know, um, but it does give you a little bit more privacy protection. Um, you can also do uh, require a passcode. And I just think that's pretty legit. So if you're sending information, you know, me and my husband, when we move a lot because of the military, so sometimes we have to send information back and forth, you know, just as we complete different forms. And so this might be an option that we could look into. Another option that Gmail has, and again, these could have been here for a while, but these are new to me. Um, I haven't needed to send, you know, a family member or anything, money or anything recently, um, but I saw that they do have this option. I was like, oh, that'd be really cool. Like, you know, if I, if I wanna send somebody money, um, then I can do that. And you can also request money. So if you click on this little button, then it brings up this screen. And I am not, I haven't used GPay, so I'm assuming they're secure and awesome, but again, I can't vouch for it, I haven't used it, I haven't done the research. But it looks like you can send money and request money, and then you can also attach a request to it, and you can add a debit card that you're gonna use to process that payment. And now I can't seem to get out of this screen. Oh, cancel. <laughs> okay, now, um, let's see. I wanna also show you how you can use Write Inbox to set up a recurring email. So this is not something that Gmail currently offers, but this, you never know, right? So in Write Inbox at the bottom here, you'll see that there's recurring, and this is a pretty cool feature. And if you click on this button, um, this is available if you have a paid subscription. And let's see here, by the way, let me just show you pricing real quick so you guys know what I'm talking about. So you do have, you can have free, um, with 10 emails a month, it looks like five sequences a month, um, but recurring emails aren't included. Otherwise, you have a yearly plan of that much, of that much, or a monthly plan. Um, just to give you an idea of kind of like what their pricing structure looks like. So what's cool about the recurring thing is you could use this like um, 
you know, if you're if you're working for a business or running your own business and you're wanting to check in on clients every every week or every month, or maybe you're running a group program or something like that, then you could set up a recurring email that goes out daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, um, every week, whatever. You could also use this to send out like birthday messages to people, to family, friends, coworkers, whatever. Um, and they'll be like, wow, I can't believe you remembered, right? So you can send that to go, like you could send a yearly email to go out. Um, and then you could, you know, say how often. So I've, I guess if you, yeah, if you click yearly, then it's going to give you a specific day of the month or a specific um, day of a week of the year. So that's really, really awesome. It looks like they have, um, yeah, different features there for those. And then you can choose like on the second day of the month um, or whatever. So really, really cool feature. Um, you know, another thing that I might use for this is sometimes I find myself emailing myself. So Let's say I wanted to check in with myself and do a monthly check in every month. I might send an email to myself every month with some journal prompts and some things to remember um, or, or stuff like that. Another thing real quick that you can do with sending stuff into the future is I like to sometimes send my, a, a letter to my future self. You can also go to a website called futureme.org to do that. But if you wanted to do it in-house in your own Gmail or with right inbox, then you could send a future email to yourself. So those are always really, really fun to get. I really enjoy those a lot. Here's one thing I'm really loving just for fun about right inbox is that you can add a GIF. So up here, there's the GIF option. And what's really cool is that it allows you to insert a GIF and it shows up right where your cursor is. And I like that it doesn't have like any of the Giphy stuff around it. You don't have to go to the website to find the code. It just makes it super easy. And you can also save GIFs. So if you have certain ones you wanna save, you can go to your saved and you can find them there. Um, and you can always remove them and you can also search. So just a really cool little feature that makes it kind of fun. You know, we're like visual people and adding that to an email or like a birthday email or something like that could be a lot of fun. Email signatures. So I'm not going to go into it in this video, but I do have an email signature that I've set up in my Gmail settings that has my information. Um, you can also um, set up signatures in right inbox. And this allows you to set up multiple different signatures and then you can like insert them as you need them. So this is personally not a feature that I would use, um, but you could use this in different ways. So you could, um, you know, have like, maybe you don't have different signatures per se, like with your name, but maybe like there's certain things that you like, want to remind people of. So like maybe you're sending out an email to a client or someone and um, they you, you really want them to like check out your podcast. You could have like a podcast signature with information on your podcast or you could have a signature about something that you're currently launching. So this would just give you an, an option to add some very specific like additional information to the bottom of your email. And all you do to uh, add that is you set your signature up and then you just click on signature and add it and for some reason oh i think it's because i don't have actually let me see here if it'll let me do that i don't think i have anything in i don't think i actually saved it yet i don't think that's why it's populating but point you get the point um another thing about right inbox is that they have a notes feature so you can add a note to a specific email and this is really cool because it's private to you so it's not going to show up um, but you can click on the note and then you can just type a private note to yourself. So maybe there's something that you need to remember. Maybe there's a little to-do list you need that corresponds with this note. Or maybe you need to remember that um, the specific person you're emailing has these preferences, whatever, right? So then you can save that and that'll be attached to your email. Another cool thing about Write Inbox is they have an, uh, CM, a CRM integration. This is not something I'll use because I personally use Dubsado for my business. If they get that in here, then that would be super awesome. But this allows you to add different emails and things like that directly into your CRM system. So pretty cool. The other thing, the last thing I'll touch on that Bright Inbox has is reminders. So let's say that you want a reminder about this email. Um, you can, let's see here. Oh, and this is cool. It allows you to check, check different things. So, um, if you set a reminder, it can also label them as a reminder. 
um, label as to be reminded until reminded. So until it reminds you, it'll show up in, under that label so you can nest it different places. Um, but this is really cool too. And again, you can do the same kind of stuff. So you could remind yourself at a very specific time. So um, one thing I might do is if I've, if I've been like writing emails to myself or something like that, you could even send an email and then have a reminder that's like, hey, like, I know this is like a really important project that you're working on. This could be to yourself, right? Um, but, but you know, remember that you got this and these are the reasons why, you know, things are working in your favor or whatever. And you could send that reminder to yourself um, kind of as like a little pep talk as you're working through a project. So those are just some ways that I have been using Gmail and organizing my emails and kind of making my workflow a little bit simpler, uh, especially with canned email responses. And these are just some features that you might not know about. So I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to click subscribe and the little bell so that you get reminded of new videos that come out. And as always, you can always find more information by visiting the website. That's mindfulproductivityblog.com and listen to my podcast. It's free and it's every single Monday. You can find it on iTunes and Spotify. It's the Mindful Productivity Podcast. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you later.